Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, all honor, all glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shah, Bahasham, Rakakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone for teaching me this truth according to the Bible through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shah. And a sincere peace and salutation to all you hopeful to let Akim out there pushing his word in all truth and sincerity, doing the work as Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shah has created us to do. So he can wake up and seal the elect of the nation of Israel, which consists of you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, and you Israelites who are scattered amongst the heathen nations that may look like the heathen nations, but your father's seed line of your lineage goes back to you being a so-called black, Hispanic, or Native American, one of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. Hey, Shalom. Hey, Shalom, Shalom. So let's get into it. So this is going to be the second part of the series I'm, I'm beginning to do. Like I said, I might do two more, end up doing two more videos on it. One one or two more videos, depending on how the spirit is. But going back into what? Yahweh's will, because that's that's what it's all about. And what we're tackling today is going in more of what it's going to be when it's all said and done. And what is that? Yahweh Shah's kingdom being established on this planet Earth. Contrary to what these, these heathen think is going to happen, look, man. The only thing that's about to take place is Yahweh Shai coming back. He making the second coming. And he's coming to take you heathen out of rulership, man. And it's all according to what the Most High has promised. Once again, Yahweh's will. So we're going to start right here in Psalms 110 and 1. It says what? Yahweh said unto my Lord, sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. And that's exactly what's being accomplished right now. Yahweh Shai is just waiting for the Most High to, get, to give him the green light to return to the earth to take this thing down, man. That's all it's going to be. Nothing more, nothing less. Because you even have, have been deceived by your own pride, thinking that you had it in the bag, that you were in control, that everything is moving according to your will. No, it's all according to what the Most High has spoken, you see? And you have no say-so in the matter. Let's get this right here. It's like I didn't want to be in this one. Let's get it right here. We can get uh Daniel two. <laughs> and this is the vision that Nebuchadnezzar, the most I gave Nebuchadnezzar, right? Now in his vision, Nebuchadnezzar had that image of those of that great statue, which represented each of the major empires that the most high ordained to come into power. And when it was all said and done, what happened at the end? Yahweh Shai came as that great as that stone cut cut out of the mountain without hands, and what did he do? He hit those ten toes part iron part miry clay, and the entire statue fell. Meaning what? What did that symbolize? That symbolized the end of the heathen rulership, and it ends with who? It ends with the Edomites, man. That's why it tells us. Matter of fact, let's go back to it. Let's get Second Ezra, because it tells us what. Second Ezra, six and seven, it says. Then answered I and said, What shall be the part in the sunder of the times? Or when shall be the end of the first and the beginning of it that followeth? So Ezra is asking when is the end of the heathen gonna uh, when is the end of the heathen rulership gonna be and when is the kingdom of heaven gonna be? So this is what the angel told him. Verse eight And he said unto me, From Abraham unto Isaac, when Jacob and Esau were born of him, Jacob's hand held first the hill of Esau, and why did that happen? It says what? Verse 9. For Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. Directly after Esau, Yahweh Shah takes Esau's power structure down. You see Babylon degrading his beast system. You see the kingdom of heaven is going to be established in the earth, man. That's all according to the Lord's will. This is the vision. You see the true vision in the earth. Not 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 this this artificial bullshit that you Edomites are trying to set up. That shit is gonna fall through the that shit is gonna fall through. We promise you that. So let's go back. So second Ezra chapter two verse forty four says what? And in the days of these kings, which are these heathen nations, shall the most high be Shall the power of heaven set up a kingdom, which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people, because this kingdom that's coming directly after Esau's kingdom is the kingdom of who? The kingdom of Israel, led by our Lord Yahweh Shah. You see? This is what it is, man. 
And this vision is consistent all throughout the scriptures. It never changes. It never alters. That's why the Most High tells us in the book of Daniel 7, verse 18, that what? The, the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom, you see, and possess the kingdom forever and ever and even forever. We are the next to rule, man. You, you, you eat a much. You're at the end of your blessing, man. This is the end for you. And no other heathen nation will rise in the power ever again. Daniel 2 and 44 says what? But it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms and it shall stand forever. You see that? And that goes directly with what's told to angel in the book of Luke. It's like, told to Mary by the angel in the book of Luke. We're going to start at verse 32. Matter of fact, we'll start at verse 31. Yep. And he says, well, and behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Yahawashah. And he shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord power Yahweh shall give unto him the throne of his father, David. You see, going back to a prophecy that the Most High gave unto David through Nathan, that's being fulfilled. Verse 33 says, well, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom there shall be no and this was this was prophesied to come to pass all the way back here. Daniel two, when Daniel was in the Babylonian captivity, this was already prophesied to be. And when you want to get even more technical with it, it was prophesied from the beginning. This is what it was going to be from the foundation, man. Verse forty five says, "What for as much as thou sawest that the stone was cut out of the mount without hands." And that it break in pieces the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver, and the gold, which represents all the major heathen empires the Most High allowed to become, come to pass in the earth. It says what? The great power have made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter. And the dream is certain, and the interpretation thereof, sure. This is what it is when it's all said and done, man. Nothing other than this. And you don't have to believe us. But you are in for a rude awakening, man. Best believe. You are in for a rude awakening. Now, we're going to get one more and we're going to close it out because I'm trying to do shorter videos with this, this, this series here. But we're going to close it out after this. This is 1 Corinthians 15 and we'll start at 24. This is it, man. First Corinthians 15 and 24 says what? Then cometh the end when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to the most high, even the Father, when he shall when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. This is what the Lord Yahweh Shah is coming to do. He's coming to take all power from you, heathen nations, beginning with you Edomites. Before we go on, let's jump to Obadiah 1. And twenty one, and it get it gives it gives us to it gives us. It's a lot here. This is given to us right here, man, to let us know what it's going to be. This add, this adds up to what we're saying in Second Ezra. This is adding up to what's said in, in the first in the book of First Corinthians. It says what Obadiah one and twenty one, and Savior shall come up on Mount Zion to judge the Mount of Esau. The Saviors are who Yahweh shine one hundred and forty four thousand. They're coming to judge who the Mount of Esau. You Edomites. And then what happens after Esau is judged? And the kingdom shall be Yahweh's. Why? Because Yahweh is coming to take down, coming to take all rulership away from you heathen nations, beginning with the chief heathen nation, the Edomites. This is it right here. And everything you see going on in the earth. Is leading up to the Lord Yahweh shall returning to fulfill these words that we're reading. We're not puzzled or guessing what's about to happen next. We know. And we're making it known to the world through the Holy Spirit of Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shah, man. 
So going back to 1 Corinthians 15 and 24 it says what? Then come at the end. You see what happens at the end? What, what, what does it represent? Who's the end? Esau is the end of the heathen rulership. Then come at the end when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to the Most High, even the Father. When he shall have put all, when he shall put, have put down all rule and all authority and power of who you heathen nations, beginning with you Edomites. Your blessing has come to an end, and you're about to be vacated from the throne, man. Verse twenty-five says, "What for he must reign till he have put all enemies under his feet to fulfill what." What we just read in Psalms 110. Sit thou on my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. That's going to be fulfilled once the Lord Yahweh Shah returns to the earth the second time. The second and final time. You see? Verse 26 says what? He have put the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. And that's only for the nation of Israel because what? Once Yahweh Shah returns, he's going to bring us into that second covenant. Where we will never die again because we will never transgress the Most High's ways again. Meaning that we will never have to reap the wages of sin, which is death. Yahweh Shah is going to destroy death for the entire nation of Israel. And then what is he going to do? Verse 27, for he hath put all things under his feet. But when he saith all things are put under him, it is manifest that it... That he is accepted, which did put all things under him. Because Yahweh Shah is coming to do what? Yahweh Shah is coming to get this earth back in order, man. And righteousness. This is why Esau is being moved out of the way. Because the earth has been fully engulfed in wickedness. And the Most High is sick of it. It's over with now. It's time for the, 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 the king of peace. You see, to return to the earth. To get this place back in the state of paradise that the Most High intended it to be. And everything will be subject unto Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. Why is that? Because it's the Most High's will, and He's going to set His sons up to make sure it gets fulfilled. You see that? Everything is about to get put back in the, into that proper righteous order upon Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. Verse 28 says, What? And when all things are subdued unto Him, then shall the Son also himself be subject unto him, that put all things under him, that the Most High may be all and all. And that's what it's about to be. Not a fucking new world order under the vibration of Satan forever, where you can just do as thou wilt, you see? Causing fucking all type of chaos and calamity and disease and death to be uh, uh, spread out, widespread all throughout the earth. No, man. That's not the Most High's vision for the planet Earth. We just gave it to you what it is. Yahweh Shah is returning to, 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 to take you heathen down, beginning with you Edomites, and we're going to rule the earth in righteousness, and it's all according to, your, to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh's will, man. This is what, this is what it's going to be, and we're going to continue to tell you, damn devils, that this is what it's going to be until it's fulfilled. You see, because you, you're you not going to shake the remnant, man. You're not going to the, shake the true believers of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. Make us back down. You see? You want to come, you, you come, come with your bullshit on the left-hand side? And we're gonna come with the righteousness from from Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah, man. And we and we and we will prevail because that's what the vision entails, man. That's the Most High's will. We will prevail. You see, you fucking heathens, especially you Edomites, you don't stand a chance against Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah, man. And that's gonna be made known, well known. You see, here in the final seconds of your whack ass kingdom, man. And so with that, I'm gonna end it by giving all praise, all honor, all glory to. Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shah, Bahasham, Rakakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone for teaching me this truth according to the Bible through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shah. And a sincere peace and salutation to all you hopeful to let Akim out there pushing his word in all truth and sincerity, doing the work as Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shah has created us to do. With that, I'm going to say Shalom, Wa, Yabah, Babah.